So let's search everybody's favorite database, JSTOR. Um, so we're going to get in under databases here from the home page. JSTOR is listed as a popular database, and that's because it's very popular. Um, so we're going to click here to uh, join up with uh, the JSTOR database and um, uh, see what we can find. So um, some interesting things to note about JSTOR generally. Um, JSTOR is a, a pretty mature, pretty old database. It's been around since the 90s. Um, it was uh, perhaps the first full-text academic database uh, available online. Um, so as opposed to uh, things that were placed on CD-ROM drives and things like that, that were available you know, in library collections, uh, JSTOR was something that leveraged what was still a somewhat new um, uh, phenomenon of the World Wide Web. Um, and uh, used that to make uh, research available to people um, from uh, th you know through their their libraries. So um, it's a very uh, interesting database and, and goes back a long ways. Um, it's also uh, as a result of that history, it's a, a full text database. So it um, provides access to the full texts of the articles that you find. Um, it's not an abstracting and indexing database like you may find with other services. Um, those databases will only provide you information about the sources, but the sources themselves don't live within the database. Um, everything you find in JSTOR is available as a, a full text. Um, another unique thing to note about JSTOR is that um, it uses what it calls a moving wall embargo. Um, so um, most of the publications in JSTOR aren't available up to the very current, most current issue. Um, most of the um, articles that are available are actually under embargo. So um, what will happen is they'll be anywhere from, you know, one to I think five years or perhaps more in some cases uh, of an embargo period where um, those uh, full texts aren't available for that publication. Um, so you can expect to find um, some, some gaps in the current coverage when you uh, search JSTOR. So if you're looking for something, you know, the most current research in a field, JSTOR is probably not the, the first place you would look because of that um, sort of moving wall embargo. Um, just to sort of see what we mean by that, um, if I go, sorry, if I hover over browse and go browse by title, um, we can see a, a title listing here. If we just pick some random um, letters in the alphabet, you can see each of these publications here, like the Harvard Law Review, for instance, um, has the range of years uh, 1887 to 2018. So it seems like um, Harvard Law Review has a four-year embargo period um, so that, uh, you know, that I think their goal is to get subscribers to the current content. People that really want um, the most current content can subscribe individually or libraries can subscribe uh, specifically to um, that publication. Um, but people who have access to JSTOR then can have this massive back file going you know, back from 2018 all the way back to perhaps issue one. I'm not entirely sure about that, but 1887 is a, is a long run of a publication. Um, so you can look out for that. You know, you'll notice that there's uh, very few, if any, um, 2022s. So there's one. Um, but um, it's pretty rare to see something that's available as a full text up to the very most current um, issue. Um, so those are uh, some things to, to think about when you're, um, when you're signing in and using JSTOR, um, just sort of knowing some of the background of, of that database. Um, so now, one thing that I've uh, noticed a lot is that JSTOR is actually kind of a difficult database to search at times. Um, and the reason for this is because it's a full text database, there's really a, a huge volume of text that you're searching um, when you enter your search terms, uh, either in this advanced search or in the basic search. So a keyword search is looking for occurrences of words um, anywhere in you know whatever it is that you're searching. Um, and in this case, what you're searching is actually uh, uh, very often the entire text of um, the articles uh, that you're looking for. So. Um, what that can mean, of course, it's a great opportunity because you're searching um, so much, but it's also um, very easy for words to show up 
um, in the body of a text when that text itself is not necessarily about that thing. So it's something to really be conscious of that um, because JSTOR is an enormous database and it's full text, um, if you don't have some strategies to narrow your search down, uh, you may wind up with a kind of overwhelming results set and not really know um, exactly how to proceed from there, right? So um, what we're gonna look at here is uh, some, uh, some specific strategies for um, narrowing your uh, search um, so that you can find things that are meaningfully related to your topic as opposed to just things that may happen to mention um, those particular words, right? So the first strategy that we're gonna look at is um, using this fields identifier. So this is in the advanced search. There's a drop down menu here. Um, and this drop down menu allows you to specify where you want JSTOR to look for your terms. Right, so um, the example I've been using is academic misconduct as a phrase. Um, so, you know, we can search for academic misconduct everywhere, um, but we can also specify that we want to look for it, say, in the, the title of the item. So as opposed to, you know, finding that phrase anywhere in the body of the text, maybe we find it in the title, and that's a much, much more specific search criteria um, than searching for it everywhere. Um, you can also choose abstract. Uh, one thing that will happen when you when you select abstract after you do the search, uh, JSTOR will give you a little warning saying that only about 10% of their articles are actually um, actually include abstracts. Um, and so in that case, it's, it's a bit of a warning just saying you may be missing something here if you're relying on searching only abstracts. So just to, to sort of pro proceed with caution. Um, but certainly, you know, choosing the item title is a safe bet. Every item has a title. Um, and if you find the words academic misconduct, that specific phrase in the title, well, odds are you're looking at something that is about um, academic misconduct and isn't just mentioning that term. Um, so we can try that out just to sort of show how specific that can be. We found 13 results where uh, the word academic misconduct was found, or the phrase academic misconduct was found uh, within the title. Um, so. Um, that's, a, that's one very sort of basic way of, again, narrowing down the, the focus of your search so that you're not finding an overwhelming uh, set of results. Another thing you can do is uh, you can use uh, these operators here. So this drop-down menu here for, for your uh, combination of keywords um, actually allows you to sort of specify what relationship you want those words to have. Um, so and is a narrowing operator. It says, um, you know, insists that both of the, these words be present in the, the uh, text or in the record um, that you're looking at. So that's a good one for, for narrowing. Um, or is not so good for narrowing, nor uh, or will actually broaden the, um, the search. So it'll, it'll kind of allow for alternative terms. So you might use or um, to open up your, your search and find more. Uh, for instance, you might say you're looking for academic misconduct or plagiarism or cheating. Um, that type of searching will you know, open up your results set to those different possibilities and help you to find more. So if our goal is to narrow, then we're not going to use or. That's not going to be a good way to narrow our search. It's going to do just the opposite. It's going to broaden things out. Um, not is another type of narrowing um, operator. Um, so what this says is, you know, amongst the things that mention this one term, um, you know, eliminate anything that mentions this other term. So, um, so remove results uh, from my list based on um, a certain keyword or a certain key phrase. Um, so that's another way that you can narrow down to. You have to be a little careful with that one. It's easy to accidentally exclude things that um, might be really good and relevant sources. So um, we'll be a little bit careful, but that's um, something to, to look out for. Um, and then in between the sort of um, the you know uh, strict narrowing versus strict broadening, we have um, this uh, these concepts of near. These are proximity operators. So what they do is um, they, they function as an and, um, but um, they insist that the words be close together within a certain number of words to one another. So here we have three options. There's near 5, near 10, and near 25. Um, 
Okay, now another thing to look at is some of these narrowing filters down below. Um, these are uh, really interesting and, and can be really useful. Um, some of the more basic ones like the type of item. So if you're looking for specifically articles, you want to avoid uh, books or uh, book reviews, that kind of thing. You can just exclude those and, and focus on the types that you're looking for. Language, publication date, journal title, ISBN. Um, these are different ways you can uh, focus your search uh, more precisely. Some may be useful in certain contexts. Um, the one that I really wanted to highlight is the journal filter here. So um, this, where you, this is where you can narrow by your discipline or even by a specific journal. This is a really great um, tool. What you can do is, um, here just scrolling down, if I find the field of education here has 175 titles in JSTOR. Um, you can use the little drop down arrow here to see what those titles are. So here's the 175 things that are labeled as um, journals in education. Um, and so you can select all of them, or you can select you know, some subset of them if you're um, interested in doing it that way. Um, I'll just choose all 175 titles. And so now, when I search for academic misconduct in all fields, instead of looking for that, that specifically, um, or you know, generally within um, any of the publications that are uh, held in JSTOR, now it's going to look um, only within those publications that are in the field of education. So this is a really nice way of kind of focusing and narrowing things down. So um, here we get 175 results. That's a, just a coincidence <laughs> that we get an average of one per uh, publication. Um, but um, here we can see, you know, academic misconduct. Uh, mentioned in the titles, academic integrity, and these are all um, journals from the field of education. So it's another nice way to narrow it down. Instead of getting you know hundreds or thousands of results, here we've got you know just you know just shy of 200 results, um, a much more manageable subset, and we can still you know refine our search to even be more specific and look for for other specific things. Um, but having that kind of tight um, set of publications that we're looking through um, can be really helpful to, to narrowing things down using a, a big database like JSTOR. Um, some other things to just uh, note once you have the results, um, we can click to uh, download the article. Um, there's terms and conditions that you need to accept in JSTOR um, at least the first time. Um, but so you can download, and there's the, the publication that we found. Um, from Research in Higher Education. This journal is actually published in 1991 on um, this article. So stretching a little ways back in terms of um, how we examine academic misconduct, probably missing a lot of uh, key things about the use of the internet and remote learning and all the uh, major topics that we talk about these days related to misconduct, but nonetheless something that matches our search here. So um, that's kind of how you can uh, jump in and access uh, the sources. You can also um, save to a list, so you can create an account in, in JSTOR. I, I haven't done that, um, but you can uh, save and, and sort of create a list of readings within JSTOR that you're interested in. And you can also use this site feature, which will give you um, the major citation styles that you can just copy and paste into a document. Um, of course, remembering that this is computer generated, so you know be careful how much uh, how much stock you put in how correct this is. Uh, sometimes there's errors and things, so definitely be careful with it, but um, you can copy that and at least have kind of a start at creating a reference uh, for a source. Um, and it also integrates with different uh, reference or citation managers, so you can export uh, in different file types um, to open, say, in a RefWorks account or um, in other uh, of such programs right, that will um, help you to manage your citations. Um, so that's the, the kind of essence of the, the features are around this. Um, so JSTOR is a really uh, cool database. Um, it is, as I say, linked from the uh, library's databases page um, under popular databases. So you can hop in there and, and check it out and use some of these strategies that we've identified here, as well as just poking around and, and figuring things out on your own. So if ever you have questions about this, get in touch with the library. We're really happy to help you out um, to find the things that you're looking for and help you navigate some of these databases. Take care.